Welcome to another edition of Sales TV. This time we have a special series for you, Sales Transformation. And we're here at Grenville Turner Studios and I'm joined by the wonderful... Dr. Grant Van Albrecht. Hello, Alex, well, it's great to be with you again. Thanks. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we have a topic for everyone today. We do. We're talking about sales transformation. Where are we starting from? Absolutely. You know, and it's a, it's a great conversation. You look at to global organizations and sales, where do you start from? When we start talking about transformation, um, it's all the buzzwords. But I think today we're going to have somebody who really knows and has experienced it from a great big corporation. We, Who's our guest today? So our guest today, I think someone you know, mm -hmm. uh, Axel Ferryrolls. Axel Ferryroll, yes, absolutely, from SAP. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. He knows all about it. And there he is. Hey, Axel, how are you today? Hi, Grant. Hi, Alex. Nice to be with you all and nice to be with all the watchers here. Uh, <laughs> I'm perfectly fine and happy to talk about sales transformation with you both. Welcome, Great. welcome. Do you want to take a few minutes to introduce yourself, Axel? Shortly then. Um, uh, I have been 30 years in the IT industry, 18 years with SAP now. I'm in charge of innovation and transformation within the global field enablement. So my role has been to collaborate with sales, to think about sales transformation and to see how we can move our five to 8,000 salespeople uh, towards a more effective and efficient way of selling. Brilliant, brilliant. So it's great that to... sounds like a mouthful. That's a <laughs> lot. That's a tough job. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Yeah, very much so. So, um, so last time we were together, we talked about uh, what sales transformation was, mm -hmm. and we covered a lot of ground. Um, and I think uh, today I really want to kick things off where uh, we start to look at where we start from. So for uh, for many years, I've been within an organization that has, um, uh, this was when I was in the corporate world, mm -hmm. that would change their go-to-market strategy almost annually. And so every year we would have this significant change. And I kind of feel like some sales leader or business leader somewhere had this grand idea that they were going to make a change and then everyone had to follow. And we'd spend the first few months of that year having to learn new things and change the way that we did things. Yeah, so true. So, and sometimes you talk about yearly strategy, sometimes it's weekly. You know, your go-to-market strategy can change on a weekly week's notice depending on trading. Yeah. So then the messages you think to your global sales team can be really convoluted and it can be very agile, you know? That's where agility has to be part of what you're doing. So yeah. it's a good discussion and I'm really glad we have Alex with us as well today. But you know, if I look at, Royal Caribbean Cruises in the international side. And in 2018, I was asked to come set up sales improvement back then. And I think we talked about that on our last show just a little bit about what is the difference between, you know, sales transformation and sales enablement, the different types of, of, of um, processes are there. But you have to look at, well, what are we trying to do? We're yeah. not really trying to just improve people. We're trying yeah. to exit away from the 1980s, you know, toxic, consultative sales process that still pervades us today. You know, it's not about manipulating sales or manipulating our customers and overcoming their objections. Yeah. It's about how do we truly transform? And that's different. Yeah. So where does one start from? Because in my experience, it, does, it did feel like someone had this grand idea and they yeah. said, right, we're going to change. Mm -hmm. And it didn't feel like they really knew where they were starting from. It was just an idea and let's go. Yeah. But where do organizations actually start from? Well, it's interesting. And Axel, you know, I'll, I'll share for just to, to kick us off. I think we have a similar uh, experience from how we know each other. Um, again, in 2018, I looked throughout all of our organization for, well, what are the ways of selling, right, mm -hmm. within our organization? And do we have the proper sales instruction for people? And the answer was no. We had thousands and thousands of documents and guides to help people sell our products and services. But when you ask what were the salespeople taught, that's where it's just, well, we hire the best people. Yeah. Uh, but what were they taught? So what we did is we went directly to Consalia Sales Business School. And there was the very first sales master's program on how do you lead sales transformation. And in my 40s, you talk about a change, I went back to school to do the master's program. 
Um, but it was so pioneering because that's where you learn the sales science, the sales psychology, the democracy, the, the, the world that we live within. And then how do you transform your sales teams to live and meet the customers? Uh, and I, I believe that's where Alex, where you and I met as well too. You were on a similar journey, is that correct? Axel. Axel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alex and no, Axel. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I got both of you guys. The same letters just jumbled <laughs> around a little bit. My, my name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm usually called Alex. It's perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> Actually, yes, it was back in 2011, 2012. I have been asked to find a way to motivate frontline sales managers to transform. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find that anywhere. I couldn't find it inside SAP. I couldn't find it in most universities who were only proposing and suggesting plain vanilla marketing type program. There was nothing about sales. So I went to Consalia, to Dr. Phil Squire, and I said, can we build something? And that's when we built the first master in sales on leading sales transformation. And we have been running it at SAP for the last 13 years now. And mm -hmm. I can tell you that it has been a journey. It has been a learning. But we started with the focus on the frontline sales managers, who we consider being the transmission belt between the strategy of the board and the customers. And if you can try to change the frontline sales managers, of course, you have a leverage impact on their sales teams. So that's where we started. Wow. And how do you uh, maintain change within such a large organization through what I can only imagine are quite complex layers of leadership? Yeah. Axel, how do you do it? We, in any large organization I know, we tend to shoot and forget. We believe that by delivering a training, you will drive transformation. We know it doesn't work. One of the key ingredients of transformation is feedback loop. The feedback loop can go through coaching, peer-to-peer -peer communication and conversations. And that's what you need to instill into your process if you want to keep the change happening. You need to have a continuous improvement, learning, exchange. You need to learn from mistakes and failures. You need to celebrate them, by the way, because you never know where you go. That's one of the points of transformation. Transformation is a sudden and deep-rooted change of perception. And you don't always know where that transformation will lead you. So you need to have this continuous process in order to drive it and to, to enable it and to make it thrive. Yeah, I would have to agree because he's, he's absolutely right. You know, even in our organization, when you roll out massive training programs, so we learned a lot from the Consolia Sales Business School about how to build our sales academy. Yeah. And we built that sales academy bespokely for our salespeople with that science and psychology in mind. But um, just like Axel as well, on the, the sales master's journey, module four was about leading change. And how do you do that? And for me, that was a pivotal moment in my uh, academic slash pracademic career path. Because, you know, in that moment with Dr. Phil, I raised my hand and said, I'm sorry, I can't use these models on my people. Mm -hmm. And he said, why? And I said, because these models are prescriptive and they say that change is automatically going to occur. But I know that that's not true. And Axel, you confirm it as well, too. When we launch a sales training one time, one, one shot and we're done, yeah. that doesn't work because you haven't touched the individual. So there needed to be something else that truly can inspire and include the individual, yeah. which is why I created uh, the model scared so what to do that. Yeah, but still organizations uh, begin transformation from the bottom up yeah. when actually it should start from the top down. I agree. I agree. Um, and in our experience, if you can bring the leadership on board with understanding how do you manage change and how do you lead that? Mm. The two different things. One is how do you manage it for yourself, but then how do you lead it for others? And inclusive change, we haven't been taught how to do that yet today. Uh, which is why we're at the pioneering forefront of, of just touching that with Scared So What. But if you can look at it for your individuals, and I ask often business leaders, I say, whenever you roll something out to people and it's a change process, and you a do you ask your people, hey, do you like this change? Do you accept this change? Are you on board with this change? And people often look at me and they go, what are you talking about? And I'm like, exactly. We don't talk that way. You know, yeah. Axel, have you ever had that in your experience? You know, do you talk to people like that? <laughs> All the time. I mean, the experience is that <laughs> human beings usually are not involved yeah. into the transformation process. They are imposed, right? So they, they see this 
pushed on them. And what do we do when we are pushed something on us? We resist. Right? Yeah. So instead of resisting, which use a huge amount of energy, what about including people into the thinking? And as you said, yes, having the top down approach is extremely important, right? If you don't have the buy-in from the top, then you will have an issue in the middle of your transformation for sure. Yeah. Wow. But you know, that also brings us as you've highlighted a good point starting from the top and that's about leadership. Yeah. So sales transformation, you know, the key word is how do you lead it and where are you starting from? And I think from the leadership, you know, what was something that I teach uh, in, in with my experiences is that there's a foundation and there's a foundation of transactional leadership, which is over here on the left yeah. and transformational leadership, which is on the right. And this is how you find your foundation of who you are, your core identity. But the interesting thing is, is it can be learned. Mm. It's a learned process. And transactional is a, uh, comes from a basis of tell. And we've all seen that, right? We've all seen mm -hmm. leaders who tell us what to do. Yeah. But then and we're not included. No, no. And we, we're obviously covering that in episode three, yeah. the yeah. next episode. But I want to come back to kind of the nuts and bolts, if you like, of where we start. So mm -hmm. we're... We're talking about where organizations we feel are doing it wrong, where they start from the bottom up. Yeah. We're saying actually it should be a top down approach and helping to uh, teach our leadership how to become transformational leaders to prepare. Mm -hmm. But then in terms of the processes and the structure, what comes first? Is there some is there a design thinking approach mm -hmm. to how we strategically tackle this idea of change, yeah. which bits come first? Do we design that process? Do we transform our leaders? Do you know? Yeah, um, Axel, you, you know, you, I think, hit that right on the head with going with Consolia, you know. At first, the first step, I think, is we have to get the knowledge. And how do we get that knowledge? You know, Axel, you want to talk about that just a little bit, how you guys did it with SAP? The first thing I would like to say is based on my experience and SAP being in the IT industry, I used to reinvent itself quickly. As you mentioned, Alex, on a 12-month basis, it's pretty much true. Um, it always starts with looking at the marketplace, okay? Because you need to look at the dynamics in the marketplace and you need to see how things are going. Probably then you look at your engagement go-to-market, then you look at your internal processes. Only then do you start thinking maybe about the roles, because let's face it, the salespeople tomorrow will not be the same with the AI and all the technology that comes. Mm -hmm. So what is the new salespeople? So you need to reflect on the role of sales. And then you say, okay, now that we have thought about all this, let's start the transformation. Let's communicate. And I guess communication is a key point for successful transformation. Let's train. But the question is the depth of transformation, mm -hmm. you know, do you go skills? Do you go behaviors and mindset? Question mark. Yeah. And um, again, do you have a continuous process to follow through? Mm, so, yeah. and, and you need to take, take a holistic approach to all of this. You cannot just say, well, I'm running this, I will see the rest later. Should be a kind of holistic, mm -hmm. synergetic approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. never ending. Well, and I love what he never said ending. because he's, he's you, you know, you're so right. And this is this is involves a, being a little bit bold. Mm. As all sales leaders, if you're running an, a sales organization of any size, any structure, it doesn't matter if it's small or large, you need to take a brave, bold look at yourself first. And mm. how are we selling to our customers? Yeah. And what is our sales process to our customers? And for us, we actually, st as I said, we started with the education because we wanted to find out how does the science and psychology meet and how should we behave to Axel's point? How do you get to the actual sales mindsets? What, what are they? We hear so much conversations on the mindsets. Well, what are they? What are the right ones that we have? Mm -hmm. What are the behaviors and characteristics we should be portraying with our salespeople to match our consumers needs? But then you can actually take that a step further. And what we did was we actually in, uh, hired an outside external company to interview, and I think it was 160, Europe, Middle East, and Africa travel agents within the cruise industry, yeah. our customers, yeah. our mainline B2B customers. And we asked them, what are the sales experiences you get from us? Mm. And how many people are truly effective at their jobs? Yeah. And that goes back to Dr. Phil's initial research for his doctorate to where he found that 10 per less than 10% of salespeople are truly effective in their jobs. Mm. Think about that. Mm. This requires you as a sales leader to truly ask yourselves, how are we selling? 
And are we truly effective at supporting our customers or are we a complete interruption of their day? And the if you can be brave enough to ask your customers what they think, guess what? They'll tell you. They will flat out tell you. But then what do you do with that data? Yeah. Do you sit on it? Uh, are you scared of what the answer will be? Or will you take that and truly start, as Axel said, the transformation process so that you can you can bring in the whole elements of how should you be selling in the way your customers want? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think about how buyer behavior has been changing over many years, but yeah. even more so uh, re more recently. Yeah. And um, uh, we, we're kind of, you know, when I think about sales organizations and the processes that they're following, it doesn't have to be a, well, let's change from A to B yeah. within three months. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of picturing in my mind's eye that uh, listening to you both talk that actually change could be gradual, but also tested if you're creating a culture for change yeah. so that you're, you're testing these, uh, these ideas of change, perhaps to align sales motion with buyer motion yeah. until you realize it works before you then make the full change for the organization. Mm -hmm. Well, and that... Axel, you, you, you look at sales entities. Uh, I, I can only imagine SAP. I know Royal Caribbean and our entities. You have to look at all the different facets of sales. Mm. You know, and that's something that uh, uh, I question a lot of sales leaders on. You know, what's your approach? And to your point, change can be small and it can, should be focused. Mm. So, you know, when we say sales, that's a broad spectrum. Mm. But look at your sales dynamics. Who are you selling to and who are your salespeople? You have inside sales, you have territory sales management, you yeah. have key accounts management and account management, yeah. sales enablement and sales support. You also have business development. Then you have contact center sales. Yeah. So whatever your strategy is in leading your sales transformation for you and your organization to meet today's consumers' needs, you have to look at all facets of your sales reach. Yeah. How are you reaching your customers? And it's not just the account managers. Yeah. Um, well, and you've got you've got strategic transformation where you're changing a lot of things that affects a lot of people at multi multi levels, but then you've got uh, uh, ta you know tactical transformation where it might be well we're going to change the way that we uh, do territory planning or account yeah. planning or the research that we do, which is still transformational, but it's kind of micro transformation, yeah. Yeah. but it, span, it still spans a lot of people, but horizontally as opposed to horizontally and vertically. Yeah, um, I, I had a good conversation with Dr. Felder just the other day and he said, Grant, keep in mind, not every entity needs to change. Yeah. So and I, uh, Axel, could you comment on that as well too? Because I know you have the experience I would like to bounce on, on what uh, Grant said about sales experience and buying experience. Um, for all sales professionals listening, I guess the key question is which sales experience do you want to provide? Because that yes. sales experience will then impact everything you do, right? From the process you set up, the way you engage, the communication um, and the leadership. So I guess we need to think now in terms of experience. For me, the key word currently is co-creation. Mm. Why? Because with the level of technology we have reached, with the speed at which markets are unifying, blending, transforming, what the customer expects is not to be sold. You know, they don't want a product. They want an ability to transform. That ability to transform into the unknown requires co-creation. What we try to do at SAP is to drive towards that notion of co-creation with the customers into something we both don't know. And we need to see that by selling the technology and the innovation that they need, they will be able to go where they want to go to reach the highest potential. And I guess that notion of what do you want to bring as an experience to your customer is what will drive your entire transformation. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's dig into co-creation, because I think that's where, as you quite rightly said before, the resistance drops when when leadership people generally feel like they're part of the creation of the transformation. Well, of course, you How, know, that's yeah. where the word collaboration comes into play. 
Yeah. Um, and change management comes into play. And just as Axel truthfully said, you know, we are far better off when we're not trying to manipulate the sales process, overcome their objections, and close, 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 which has always been the mantra in every single sales ethic. We talk about how we need to, you know, make sure that we involve the customers. But to Axel's point, how often, and answer this honestly, how often are you truly collaborative? Yeah. How often are you truly creative? We, we try and do it in the sales process. Yeah. You know, good, good high performing sales people will, will make their buyer feel like they're part of, you know, the, the evaluation of different options. So why don't we do it within our own organizations? Well, isn't that funny? You know, if you as a consumer yourself, and this is where I find it hilarious that we, it's actually in, insane if you think about it, as a sales professional, when we're, when we take our hat off, you know, our work hat off, and we mm -hmm. go out to buy and consume products ourselves, you go to a store or something, the last thing you want is for some pushy salesperson to come up, do you want this? Do you want that? I've got this on sale, etc. And mm -hmm. often the first thing we do is, thanks, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. I'll call you when I need you. Yeah. And why do we do that? We do that because we don't want to be sold oh, to. So if we feel that within our identity, yeah. then how do we as sales leaders transform and give the power slash the empathy slash the uh, empowerment to our salespeople to meet the customer truly where they are? Mm -hmm. And you know what? That requires bravery. Mm -hmm. And it also requires, as Dr. Phil says, authenticity. Because I believe we should be, and I see Axel, you're smiling to this as well. I believe we should be so honest mm -hmm. in our sales approach into helping the customer understand about our products and services, but also understand how we can meet or maybe we cannot meet yeah. their needs. I kind of hear, I'm hearing the transactional sales leaders out there saying, but I don't have time for that grant. Mm -hmm. I just need to tell people what to do and they need to do it. Yeah. Do you want to take that one, Axel? <laughs> I was I was almost going to jump on what I call the paradox of sales, right? We are here believing that transformation is key and we need um, transformational salespeople. But on the other hand, we have this quarterly pressure mm -hmm. and we know that we need to forecast, we need to drive the deal, we need to close the deal and make the, the revenue. Where there is a hope within that process, especially from our IT perspective, is that we move from an on-prem to a cloud model. The cloud model is not so much about what you sell, it's about realizing the value. Mm -hmm. Realizing a value is a post-sales influence, it's a post-sales effect. So selling is not enough anymore. And we need to think sure. of sales in a much broader sense now. Not The selling act is important, but the pre-sales and the post-sales becomes now even more important. Yeah. And I guess that is starting shifting the, 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 the focus on what sales is all about. Because we need to help the customer realize the value with what they have. That realization is what drives sales moving forward. And then that takes more time. So the time span has to be expended. And that's true. And you know what? It's not, it's not a luxury. Yeah. So you, if you're thinking, like you, the question you just posed, are you a transactional sales leader and says, I need to hit my targets? You know, you need to find an innovative way to meet the customer mm -hmm. of where they are today. Because what you just described, Axel, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Julian Birkinshaw, you know, his research has unveiled the democracy and the ad hocracy that we're currently living in today. And you might think, okay, Grant, that's a big academic word. And let, I can break it down for you really simple. People are buying based off of emotional wants and needs. Mm. So my generation and above, we're still a little bit on, I'm okay to do some research and I want to see the points of data, etc. But that doesn't apply to everybody. And you see that with social media, TikToks, uh, Instagram, all the different types of feelings, likes and pressures, etc. People mm. want to see that a company identifies with something and that identity needs to identify with who the actual consumer is. Yeah. So it's not, you can't just focus anymore on your products. It's got to be about who you are, the identity you are, and how you're meeting these people in an emotional society. Yeah, yeah. With, and with that, I think we're going to have to draw a close because oh. we are coming to the end of our time together. Axel. <laughs> We have to continue this. Yes, we do. Uh, we'd love to. <laughs> we will. We were just getting going, I think. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, With pleasure. So thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, 
my apologies for some technical issues with the sound, I think, at the beginning. I do want to leave us with a final thought here from Dr. Aditya Kusama, who says, sales transformation requires a growth mindset yes. from organization member. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you again for everybody that joined us uh, and for the fantastic use of Grenville Turner Studios yes, here at Cranfield University. Great to be here. Um, have a wonderful rest of day and enjoy the rest of your week. We will see you for episode three when we look at transactional versus transformational leadership. Take care all. Very good.